Good morning, everyone. I'm Alberta Party Leader Greg Clark, here to release the Alberta Party Shadow Budget for Budget 2017, Pathway to Prosperity. It's our detailed plan to again put our province on the right track. Now, I'll be taking your questions at the end, so please feel free to ask any questions you like in the comment section. I'll take as many as I can. Yesterday's budget shows the NDP are clearly on the wrong path. It's a path that leads to perpetual deficit and unsustainable debt. And it might even get worse. They've used unrealistic forecasts for energy prices, they've under-budgeted for natural disasters, and I think they've overestimated economic growth. This is frustrating because I know that there is a better path. There's a path that creates economic growth. A path that sees frontline services grow to match population growth. And a path that balances the budget in four years. It is a pathway to prosperity. Now, we've run the numbers for the NDP plan as well as the right-wing Wild Rose plan. And we found that both have devastating consequences for our province. Now, behind me, you'll see the chart of the NDP budget trajectory. You'll see that that budget never balances. No matter what the NDP say, their spending always exceeds or matches any new revenues that come in. That means Alberta's deficit is perpetual and our debt level is unsustainable. There's absolutely no evidence that that will ever change. Now, the Wild Rose Plan, as you'll see here in a moment, shifts the fiscal deficit to a human and an infrastructure deficit. Now, based on their stated policy of never running deficits, they have to make massive cuts to frontline public services right now to make up the $10 billion deficit. This would result in thousands of job losses, big wage cuts, longer wait times for health care, more kids in every classroom, and huge cuts to capital spending, resulting in cuts in fewer uh, health projects, fewer schools, roads, transit, flood infrastructure, and things that really matter to everyday Albertans. The Alberta Party plan puts all options on the table. Ours is a responsible plan not only to get to balance, but to start paying back debt. We've done this by making much more prudent revenue forecasts than the NDP. For example, we forecast oil prices based on the forward curve, not on private sector or internal government estimates. This means our forecast for oil prices is $51 this year, $52 next year, and $53 the year after that. So although we're forecasting lower revenues, we think that's much more sustainable and much more a responsible approach to budgeting. Our plan puts all options on the table. It not only gets back to balance, but it starts paying back debt far sooner than the NDP. We've also constrained spending for four years at 1%, but we've continued to fund increases in the core services in healthcare, in education, in post-secondary, in children's services, and in community and social services. Our funding increases are 1.3% per year in each one of those groups. And that 1.3% will match population growth in Alberta. We've also budgeted more for the NDP than for, uh, for disaster planning than the NDP did. They have moved back to budgeting only $235 million. We've budgeted more than twice that to get our number much closer in line with the 10-year rolling average of disaster co uh, costs in this province. We saw the devastating wildfires in Fort McMurray last year. We saw the floods just a little more than three and a half years ago. The fact is this is a trick that governments always use to make their deficit number look lower. So in fact, things could even be worse than what the NDP presented to us yesterday. We'll also focus on getting capital spending dollars out the door. The NDP have a habit of making announcements but not actually making sure the projects get completed. Last year they, they announced over $1.2 billion of projects that didn't get built. And that means that Albertan jobs weren't created and the facilities that were Albertans rely on didn't get built. Our approach is much more responsible to ensure that our capital spend focuses only on projects that can actually be built. We've maintained strong capital funding with over $7 billion in capital investment in the Alberta Party Plan. We'll also ensure that our, our public services are sustainable by freezing public sector wages. Now, I know that's a very challenging thing, and I want to be very clear that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, Albertans public, for Alberta's public servants. You do incredible work, but in a challenging economic time, 
I think it's only fair when over a hundred thousand Albertans have lost their job to get paid the same next year as you get paid this year. That will allow us to continue to expand frontline public services by hiring more teachers, hiring more nurses, frontline social workers all throughout Alberta's uh, public service all around the province to provide the services that Albertans need. We would also ensure that Alberta's carbon tax transitions to become revenue neutral and that the rebate is continued for people in the lowest third of the income bracket and that people are rebated at actual cost of the carbon tax. We'll get Alberta off the non-renewable resource revenue roller coaster by capping the amount of money we budget for non-renewable resource revenues at only $3 billion. Now, that's a lot of money to fund core services. But if and when we get to surplus over and above that, that money will be used to pay down debt, to fund capital projects, and then ultimately to rebuild Alberta's Heritage Fund. At the end, this means the Alberta Party deficit would be $8.7 billion this year, which is about uh, uh, $1.5 billion less than the, uh, than the NDP. Next year it would be 6.9, then $5.6 billion, $3.4, and finally we would balance after four years. Our plan would result in $25 billion less debt than the NDP's plan. And that works out to a billion dollars a year in lower debt service costs than the NDP. Now I want to be clear, there are options and there are choices. None of these choices are easy ones to make. But to balance in four years, we've had to, uh, we've had to spend a little less on things like capital grants. But I want to be very clear that we believe that at, at, at over $7 billion in spending, those are dollars that can actually be deployed, getting Albertans back to work and building the infrastructure that we need. Now, I want to continue the discussion about this, so please add your comments in. We'd love to hear your thoughts on Pathway to Prosperity. And the challenge that we find ourselves in uh, is a result of the NDP's unwillingness to, uh, to take uh, a responsible approach to budgeting. We in the Alberta Party believe that we can get to balance within four years without having a substantial impact on frontline public service and we can also continue to invest in the capital projects that Albertans really uh, rely on. And so with that, I'll thank you for watching this, and I'll turn and have a read at some of the questions and comments that you uh, have posted, and we'll take as many as we can here as we get going. So the first question is, it looks like health spending is flat, but population growth continues. You've said you're going to fund inflation plus population, uh, in, inflation, uh, uh, fund uh, uh, health services uh, and core frontline services uh, with a 1.3% increase. What we did is we carved out two different aspects of health. One are salaries, which equate to frontline service, and the other is administration. We cut 1% out of administration, but we added 1.3% in new spending to frontline public services to match population growth to ensure that we can hire new frontline health care uh, workers to meet the needs of Albertans. Uh, in a $20 billion health care system, I'm absolutely confident we can find at least 1% savings in administration. And quite frankly, I think we can probably find a lot more than that. What we've done has been very cautious and prudent in how we go about budgeting because we want to be as realistic as possible. Here's another question. A question came in on Facebook talking about teachers already having a wage freeze. Why would we do that again? That's one of those very, very difficult choices. Uh, and uh, wage, uh, the teachers uh, in their last contract had three years of wage freezes and then a 2% increase in the fourth year, in this most recent year. And I know that's j difficult, and I don't for a moment uh, diminish the incredible work that teachers do in this province. Uh, my, my daughters are in public school, and I appreciate every single teacher we've ever had, and they are remarkable. But when your neighbors are losing their jobs, when your neighbors have taken a substantial pay cut or have taken reduced work hours or both, I know of many people who haven't worked for going on two years now. To have a job that is stable, to have a pension that's guaranteed, to have the same uh, wage next year as you had this year, I think in a very challenging economic time, that's fair. Now, I know that may not be what everyone wants to hear, but those are the sorts of difficult decisions that I think Albertans expect their, their uh, provincial leaders to make, and that's a decision I'm, uh, I'm, I'm willing to, uh, to make. Uh, all right, another question here. So uh, a question came in earlier about entitlements. Uh, 
uh, the things that Albertans are, uh, are, are signed, uh, get as part of being Albertan. One of the things that's very important is that vulnerable Albertans or Albertans who genuinely need help ought to get help from their government. I think that that's a real uh, statement of what it means to be Albertan. But there are a lot of uh, programs that don't do means testing, don't do income or asset testing. And the real question is, are there Albertans out there who don't really need the help, but are getting help? So one of the things we would do is go and do a comprehensive review of entitlements and ensure that only the Albertans who really need help get help. Now, to be very clear, that's going to also be a challenging conversation. But in difficult economic times, when the revenues don't seem to be there, when we have pressures on our health care system and education system and human services systems, we need to make sure that only the people who really genuinely need help are getting help. And that's a core part of what I believe uh, is uh, long overdue in this province. Uh, a couple more. So someone asked uh, earlier about uh, the NDP using uh, selective numbers or being overly optimistic. The NDP have assumed that the price of oil is going to average 40, 54 55 dollars this year, whereas uh, yesterday the price of oil was below 49 uh, For far too long in this province, every government, before the NDP and now the NDP, have really just crossed their fingers and hoped that the price of oil goes up. Well, I can tell you, hope is not a strategy. There's tremendous risk, especially when the, the spending uh, that the NDP have uh, proposed uh, is as high as it is in relying on uh, something that's totally beyond our control. So our uh, forecasts are, are much more conservative than the NDP's. We've also f uh, budgeted more for disaster assistance than the NDP have. They have budgeted a far lower number. They've also assumed that uh, economic growth will be 2.6%, which is fully 0.4% higher than the 2.2% average uh, of uh, private sector forecast, and it's even two points higher than what the NDP themselves uh, used in their third quarter fiscal update just a couple of weeks ago. This is irresponsible budgeting. It's budgeting by hope uh, and uh, crossing your fingers, and that is not uh, the way that any organization should be run, especially one as large and important as the government of Alberta. I'll just see if we have any more questions coming through. Uh, here's one from Facebook. How does the Alberta Party plan to invite back foreign capital investment into the oil and gas sector when other countries are more competitive? That's a really, really good question. Um, one, we need to ensure we have a competitive royalty regime. Two, we need to ensure we have a competitive corporate tax regime. Uh, we're going to do that by using the carbon by offsetting the carbon tax with cuts to personal tax into corporate tax and the small business tax. That will make Alberta an even more attractive investment climate. We need to ensure that we have strong regulation, but that regulation is fair and that it's efficient and that it's easy for companies to do business in this province. I want to say how fiercely proud I am of Alberta's energy industry, what it has done for our province and what it continues to do and what I sincerely hope that it does long into the future. Alberta has a tremendous track record of environmental sustainability. We have a very strong regulatory environment. We have a tremendous safety culture in this province. The way that Alberta does oil and gas is exactly how the world should do oil and gas. And I think the world should look to Alberta as a leader. And we ought to be fiercely proud of our energy industry. At the same time, the world is changing around us and I think we need to be aware of those changes. So Alberta can and should continue to have a strong energy sector but we should also look for ways of taking a step into the next economy. Alberta has remarkable universities. We have incredible tradespeople. We have strong finance people. We have an entrepreneurial spirit. Alberta can and should help the world solve the problems of tomorrow and help generate new economic activity in this province, which will enhance our oil and gas industry. Hope that answers your question. So we've got one last question here about capital investment. Um, that we say we're going to uh, make sure that we get that uh, dollars out the door. Uh, yes, our number in our uh, shadow budget, the pathway to prosperity, is lower than the NDP's uh, planned infrastructure spending number. But we're confident that the projects that we would fund are projects that are shovel ready, that will actually get built this year, that the money we budget actually will get to work by, and, and will actually put Albertans to work. Again, last year the NDP underspent their capital budget by 1.2 billion dollars. That allowed them to run around the province making all kinds of announcements and promising all sorts of facilities 
when they knew they couldn't build them all. We're only going to fund capital projects that we know can be built. And don't forget, our plan still calls for more than $7 billion in capital spending this year. There is a tremendous need for new infrastructure in this project. There's a tremendous need for upgrading existing infrastructure, uh, renovating schools, building new seniors, long-term care facilities, building health infrastructure all over this province, building roads, funding transit, building flood mitigation. There's an awful lot of needs in this province, and we will ensure that we have strong capital funding. Comparing that to the Wild Rose Plan, they would trim almost $6 billion out of capital spending this year. And if any of my friends from Wild Rose disagrees with that, I would love to see your detailed shadow budget for how you would balance the budget in the short term. That's what I think Albertans expect from their opposition parties. So with that, we'll end this Facebook Live session. You can go to abpartycaucus.ca to have a look at the Alberta Party Shadow Budget Pathway to Prosperity. We're also going to be releasing all of the numbers that we've used in an open data format for anyone who wants to have a look at that data and do what, uh, what they can to balance the budget. And we absolutely want to hear from you, either through a comment section here on Facebook or through uh, our caucus webpage, abpartycaucus.ca. Thanks very much.